is the paradigm shift? What are we dealing with? Well, hi, Shay. Uh, first, let me let me uh, say that I'm glad you said that I was not a change agent. We we got to make that clear. And uh, hi, Connie. Oh, uh, hi, Jen. I know you by reputation. And <laughs> To, uh, to speak with you or listen to you, and, and uh, you've, you've educated me in the last hour. Um, the paradigm shift, it, it's interesting. Uh, basically, it's, it's something that people, it's, it's a buzzword that, that is used a lot that most people really don't even understand what it, what it is. And a paradigm basically is just a model that can be reproduced. And so it can be a new model for, it can be a model for anything, a model for society, or a model for man, uh, or in the case of education, a new model for education. Um, and that's what the, the shift in the paradigm is all about, the, the, the shifting to a new model, a new model for man, a new model for society, and a new model for education. Uh, the term paradigm comes from a, a gentleman by the name of Thomas Kuhn, who wrote a, a book called The Structure of Scientific Revolution. Right rather dry book, but he goes into it and he says that a paradigm shift, if you're going to shift the paradigm, you're changing the actual fundamentals of whatever it is you're dealing with. And, and if you look up fundamentals, the fundamentals of something are, are, are what make that act, uh, uh, item what it is. And so if we change the fundamentals, we're changing the whole thing. We're, we're, we're rearranging it so that it is no longer what it used to be, but it's something completely new and different. And in reference to uh, what Shay was talking about earlier, this Stanford study, the changing images of, of man, they uh, reference Thomas Kuhn. And uh, then they go on to say that, that the paradigm sh uh, can only exist if there's a shared commitment to certain beliefs. In other words, that they, and then they say, too, that they have to, the people going along with the new paradigm must share uh, relevant values. And... Uh, that leads into education from the standpoint that later in that study, uh, see, most of us people have our values and our moral beliefs pretty well set, uh, at least by my come up on 50 years old this next uh, week, and, and uh, my values are pretty well set. With, so the children have become the, the very focal point of this bridge to the 21st century. In fact, the bridge is actually education. Uh, Hitler proved that within one generation we could turn society on its heels. And what the, the study from Stanford does say that, uh, and I'll quote, that the new paradigm is often fully is often fully accepted only with a gen new generation, uh, and, and that's what they're looking at to train the new generation in a new paradigm to create new a new image of man out of our children. Uh, which is, in my estimation, real despicable that they go after our babies. Uh, but that's, that's the way they're going to do it. Shea also mentioned the, uh, the radical center and how the right and the left are both bringing this about. And we see that in as far as the moral education of children in the schools. Um, there, is a, there is moral education going on in the schools. Um, they hide it. They, they tend to say, no, we, we separate uh, religion, church, and state, and all of that, but they're, they're uh, training our kids morally for the 21st century. The left, from, from the left, we have what's, what's called moral reasoning, and that really is, is follows through with humanism. And so we have the right, uh, the Christian right, getting very upset about all the humanist values and stuff that are going into schools, is to train children in moral reasoning. In other words, they have to develop humanistic moral principles can be given moral situations that they can analyze and then come to conclusions uh, about moral conduct based on those uh, principles, those humanist principles. From the right, then, we have another aspect of moral education, which is education for virtue. And that's a Bill Bennett buzzword, mm -hmm. virtue. And um, what that really is is moral conduct is what they're talking about there. And so we have character education coming in from the right. Um, so we have both sides of, of the, the radical center, coming to the radical center, moral reasoning from a humanist vein, along with certain character traits or, or values um, that are being put forth as far as moral conduct. So 
principles would be things like respect and responsibility, honesty, self, um, patience, tolerance is a big one, uh, those types 